Hi, Gary Chillingworth here for Egg Island Magazine and Shooting and Country TV. Welcome to Life at a Range. Okay, so this week we're going to look at safety, probably the most important thing that any air gunner can do. Now, before we get started, what I would like to do is to split you up into two groups. Those of us who are experienced and have been shooting air guns for a long time, and those of you who are coming in to the sport or you know to the joys of, of air gunning. Now, first of all, for those experienced guys, I understand that a lot of this is going to be stuff you've seen, you've done, you've taught, but please watch the whole video. Now, those of you who know me know that I've been an experienced HFT marshal for many years, but I don't know everything. In fact, a lot of people say I know very little, and to them, I yeah, I completely agree with that. But please watch the video, and if there is stuff that I have missed, please put it in the comments below. Uh, that's all I ask. For those of you who are watching this video because you're coming into the sport, please watch the video and then read the comments below. Because the guys who are more experienced than me, who might have picked up on something that I've forgotten, they will be putting their knowledge below, and it, it should hopefully be gold. Um, the other thing is, I've got to say a huge thanks to our little community that we've got on Facebook at Life at a Range. Um, I put up that I was making this video, and so many people have got involved and have told me and said to me, look, Gary, look at this, look at that. And without you guys, this video couldn't have been made because you suggested things that I'd completely forgotten about. So thank you so much. So if you want to get involved, come and join us at Life at a Range on Facebook. We also have a web page, lifeatarange.com. And if you want to contact me, contact me at lifeatarange at gmail.com. Now, let's get on with the video and let's talk about some safety. One of the best things about air gunning is if you're on the range and there are people around you, someone like myself, who's got a, a TX200 that you've never shot before, and you go up and say, hello, mate, can I have a look at your rifle? Yeah, of course. Do you want to have a shot? No problem at all. That will be great. Here you go. It's not loaded. Anyone who says that to you is a liar. Now, I'm not saying that they're actually a liar, but if somebody hands me a rifle and says it's not loaded, I've only got their word for it. Never, ever trust a rifle until you have proven to yourself that the, the rifle is clear and unloaded. So with a spring gun, if somebody lent you their gun, you say, thank you very much. For my own peace of mind, do you mind if I check? And they will go, not a problem at all. If they start getting funny about it and say, well, I told you it's not loaded, say, no worries at all, thank you very much, and hand the rifle back. But I don't know anyone who would say that. So with a spring gun, under lever, just crack it, look down the barrel, and you can see there's no pellet in it. You haven't cocked it. You now know this rifle is safe. If it's a PCP, it's even easier. Just draw the bolt back, have a look inside, make sure it's not safe, Close the bolt. If you physically cocked it with a PCP, you can dry fire. But obviously, before you do anything like this, speak to the owner of the gun. But always check to make sure the rifle is loaded. Now, another great piece of advice that I was given by Phil Price, my old air gunner editor at magazine, top bloke, and it's something I never, ever did. It says, whenever you take your gun out the bag, cabinet, under your bed, bathroom cupboard, check to make sure that it's not loaded. Whenever you put your gun away, the last thing you do, check that it's not loaded. Even if you've just come off the range, check that it's not loaded. So always check your gun. When you take it out of the cabinet, check it. When you put it away, check it. Take it out of your bag, check it. If you've got a magazine system, remove the magazine, but still check down the breech. Basically, check, check, check. Every gun is always loaded until you've proven to yourself that it isn't and never take anybody's word, not even an idiot like me. The number two rule is never ever point your rifle at anything you don't want to shoot. 
I'm standing here, my rifle's pointing at the ground, that's safe. If I want to shoot a target, I'll aim at the target, that's safe. But what I'm not doing is I'm not swinging the rifle around. I'm thinking about where the barrel is pointing at all times. Now, this brings us into another rule. Which way do we point the barrel? If you're used to shooting shotguns, you're ex-military, you shoot powder burners, you know, big guns, they will always teach you to carry your rifle barrel up. Now, I don't even like doing this, and I'm on my own personal range, and I know that we've got safety everywhere, but this feels alien to me. Powder burners, they do this. Because if this gun goes off, if they have a negligent discharge, the round will go up in the air, three, four, five thousand feet, will lose all its energy, and will then fall to the ground. Now, it will fall at terminal velocity, which I think is around about 160 miles per hour, but if that hits you in the head, it will just bounce off and it won't cause a problem. If, however, they're carrying their rifle muzzled down, and the round goes off and hits a stone, could cause a ricochet is still carrying most of its energy and will come back and will hit you in the leg femoral artery you're not going to have a good day with an air gun if you shoot into the ground if you're unlucky enough to ha hit a stone and you do get a ricochet it's still dangerous but it's not going to be lethal you're carrying a rifle maybe barrel up and it accidentally goes off it could hit someone in the face in the eye whatever so the ruling within air guns bit sweaty today, is always carry the rifle muzzle down. The trigger. Simple rule. Never ever put your finger on the trigger until it's time to take the shot. Don't put it anywhere near the trigger. Stick it in front if you want to hold it. If you can hold the rifle like that, put it in the groove, put it up, put it down. Just hold it like that. Never on the trigger. Now, this is for two reasons. Number one, it doesn't scare people because you see because they see you standing at the firing line with your finger on the trigger. And secondly, getting into this habit can save you valuable points. And I'm now going to give you a demonstration and show you why. Okay, trigger. Never ever put your finger near the trigger until it's time to shoot. It's not just good practice, but it can save you points. And I'll explain why. We're at an HFT peg, and it's in the middle of winter, and we're cold, and our hands are numb. It's time to load the rifle. And there we are, we're good to go. Now, our rifle's got a safety, so we take it off, and we're ready to shoot. And we're getting down, we're putting our finger on the trigger. Oh, and I've just fired off. Zero points. That's not good. This is what I do. Yeah, you know, I felt really bad doing that, even though I double and triple checked that everything was safe, it still felt very alien. Okay. So, I've taken aim. My crosshairs are in the kill zone. I've taken my safety off. I've rechecked and now I'm going to put the finger on the trigger. Ah! I accidentally pulled through. My crosshairs were on the trigger. And the target's fallen over. Or at least got a plate. So, line up. Crosshairs in the kill zone. And only when you're in the kill zone, put your finger on the trigger. One of the things that infuriates me more than anything else is people saying it's only a pellet gun, it's only a BB gun. Are they dangerous? It's a rifle. It's designed to kill small animals at 30, 40 yards. And if you shoot a person in the right place, unfortunately has been proven over the years, one of these will kill. So to prove a point, we have here 
my dinner, tin of big soup. And what we're going to do is we're not going to shoot it that way. We're going to shoot it that way. We're going to go through the long part and out the other side. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, we've actually already done it. And when I recorded this bit beforehand, I forgot to press play. But we'll prove a point. We'll put it down range and you'll see me shoot this. And well, look, we've already done the thing. So yeah, it was devastating. Careful with air guns. Okay, so we shot our kit can of big soup, and as you can see, we've got a nice entry point here. The pellets travel all the way through, and even though it didn't quite have enough energy to blow its way through the other side, let's face it, this is a big tin of soup, densely compacted with liquid. It's made a huge dent on the other side, so it's almost come through. It may be a 177 air gun pellet, but that is similar to the width of my head. And I've got a lot of liquid in my head. Careful with your air guns. Another very important thing is look beyond the target. Now, if you shoot powder burners, shotguns, whatever, the first thing you will always look at is you will look at what you want to kill and then you will look behind. You know, if you get some of our great, if you watch all of our shooting videos on Shooting in Country TV and you look at some of our other more experienced powder burners who are shooting foxes out at three or 400 yards, they may see a fox down there coming towards the brow of a hill. Do you shoot it? Absolutely not. If you miss that fox or if the round goes through the fox, it'll go over the top of the brow of a hill. It'll go on for another 100 yards or so a thousand yards or so and we'll land in someone's garden well the same goes with air guns yeah we're not going to send a pellet a thousand yards but you look down range you never know there might be a cat a rabbit there might be some very little animal there might be a chance for a ricochet just beyond the target think about what is not only at your target and beyond your target and from a practical point of view I'm looking at that target. It's 45 yards. Yeah, great. That's my maximum distance. Oh, hang on. What's that target just behind it? That's another target on the lane next to me. So that can't be 45 yards. Oh, okay. So it's 40 yards. And I've just gained myself an extra point. So look at your target. Look what's in front of the target. Look what's beyond the target. And then you can shoot. And hopefully hit something. I missed. Is this rifle safe? Pull the trigger? Yeah, it's safe. It's perfectly fine. There's a ceasefire. So I'll just put it in the bag. It's on safe. Is it safe? No. Never trust the safety. Safeties are absolutely fantastic. They're brilliant but never fully trust them. They are there as a second line of defense. This gun, as far as I'm concerned, is loaded and there is no such thing as a safety. It's pointing down range and this rifle will never ever move from pointing down range with a pellet in it and cocked. If I need to move it and move around, the safety will come off and I'll fire into the ground. The safety is a second line of defense and it should never ever be trusted. Okay, so if you've got a spring gun or you've got a PCP and you're standing at the firing line and the firing line is that way. If you have a springer and you want to load it, barrel over the firing line, cock the rifle. You're pointing it up in the air. Some people may disagree with that, but we have targets high up in trees, so it's not an issue. So over the firing line, cock and load. Load it, pointing over the firing line. 
what you don't do, cock, load, and now the rifle is pointing down the firing line at some ball bloke who's standing there. Same goes with a PCP. When you're loading it, always point over the firing line. Now, what a lot of people do is if this is the firing line, we use my, say my microphone cable here is the firing line and the peg is here, is they will place their gun bag with the barrel pointing down the range. So when they lift their rifle out the bag, it's automatically pointing down range. Okay, so firing off and ceasefires. So we're in a competition. We're doing a stand-in shot, mainly because my knees are dodgy and I don't want to get down on the ground unless I have to. So we're looking at our shot. It's 30 years old away. Okay, it's time to, time to shoot. So fingers not on the trigger. Barrel is pointing over the firing line. We're going to load. Time to shoot. Safety off. And then a whistle gets blown. Cease fire. Now, we've now got to fire the round away safely. So do I just go like that? About a yard in front of me. Hits a stone, comes back, hits me in the eye. No, that's not what we do. It's not safe. And I didn't even like doing that, even though I checked the ground beforehand. Just going to get another pellet. Oh. My little leather pouch available from Rex Bennett, and they're very, very lovely quality. Put that down there. So, when you're loading, when you're cocking, always hold on to the, uh, onto the lever. Because the last thing you ever want to do is putting your finger in there, accidentally touch the trigger. This flies forward if the bear trap fails, and you're going to chop your finger off. Um, Phil Price did a brilliant video like that with a carrot where he fired it and chopped the carrot in half. I'm not going to do it in my spring gun because it'll damage it. But check out Phil Price's video with the carrot. It's actually quite scary. Um, okay, so now we've got a ceasefire. Someone's blown one whistle, which means all stop. Probably follow it up with the word ceasefire. Pick a spot eight or nine yards downrange. And physically look, pick a spot. I like to raise the gun up, look through the scope, pick that spot and fire not just fire off. Now, the other thing is, if you're a marshal and Jenny Stone picked this up, and thank you, Jenny, um, blow a whistle and walk across the firing line. No, if you're a marshal, blow your whistle, call for a ceasefire, and please wait for everybody to fire off. I was once in a competition, the guy next to me blew a whistle, I was still looking through my scope, and then I saw a pair of legs going out before I'd even fired off. Not safe. So, one whistle means stop. Two whistle means good to go. Pick your spot to fire off your pellet. And let's all have a nice, safe day. Seb Martinez on Facebook came up with a great suggestion. What about guns with magazine systems like the HW100? Um, I'll be honest with you, I very rarely shoot magazine systems because I'm a competition right, a competition shooter. I, I'm, I'm not a hunter. But I'm aware that some systems have the ability to double load. So in HFT, and I think in FT as well, the rule is that if there is a ceasefire and in between shots, after you've taken your shot, you have to cock the rifle, remove the magazine, put it in your pocket, and then when it's time for you to shoot again, put the magazine back in and then you're time to go, and it's good to go. Well, the question is, can you double load the pellet? So make sure that what you do with your magazine system, that you're aware whether or not it's, you're capable of double loading or shooting on an empty chamber. Um, what a friend of mine does is he has a fully loaded magazine, he fires his shot, he removes his magazine, and he loads the one that he's just reshot. So that way he knows that he's always got a full magazine so he won't double load he won't have a, a an empty chamber so essentially he's treating it as a single shot uh, weapon but it just has the capability of shooting another 18 shots either that or get yourself a single shot tray
Simon Bateman came up with a great one about gun sharing. If I pass this rifle over to somebody, they've never shot this gun before. They don't know how light the trigger is. They don't know its foibles. So you can explain it to them and say to them, please feel free to, to try my gun, but explain to them what, you know, does it have a super light trigger? And before they want to take a proper shot, let them take not a practice shot, but they can fire one into the ground safely. Now, if you're on a competitive, or sorry, if you're in a competition and you are gun sharing, spend some time on the range beforehand, the both of you passing your gun to one another and, and sharing the rifle. So you're both fully under, you both fully understand what's going on. And the other thing is, is communication. Communication. Don't take your rifle and just put it in the bag and then let them take it out. You, instructions go both ways and that way you'll know exactly what's going on with the gun when you're gun sharing. One of the questions we also got asked from Liz Osman is how do you get up and down from a peg safely once you finish shooting? Now that's a great question and uh, and it reminds me of Liz, I think it was back in 2017 when she shot the HFT World Championships. Liz was heavily pregnant with her son at the time. Um, she was absolutely amazing. Shot both courses over both days in snow, rain. It was horrendous conditions. Just shows how tough you have to be a mother, how, how tough you have to be to be a mother. Um, so how do you get up and down safely? Well, the easiest way to do it is to have your gun bag next to you. And when you finish shooting, just slip your gun into the gun bag and up you get. But not everybody carries a gun bag. So the way I always do it is I just leave my gun up against the peg, get up safely and then bend over to pick it up. up. Um, or if you've got a few problems, ask your shooting partner, pass them the gun safely and they will always more than happily help you. One of the most important things that we can do is storing our guns. Now, I'm lucky. I've got a gun cabinet. I picked it up off eBay for £50. I put my guns away. I've got some of those crystal gel packs to take moisture away, which I keep in the bottom of the cabinet. I lock it up, and I know that all of my shooting stuff is in one safe place. But not everyone can have a gun cabinet. Well, use a hard case and padlock it. Put it under your bed. Chain it to the bed frame. Stick it in a cupboard, lock the cupboard, chain it to the wall. Basically, keep your guns secure and locked away. Um, it is a legal requirement. The other thing is when you're transporting them, keep them locked in a bag and not easily accessible. You don't want to be driving around with your guns on the, in the passenger seat because if you get pulled over by plod, they won't be particularly happy about that. And if you can, try and keep the ammunition separate. There, there is actually a rule for that. Um, but it's more aimed at powder burners. But if you can, don't keep your pellets and your guns together. Actually, while I'm thinking about it, also, when you're traveling around, a little thing about air tanks. Now, air tanks are incredibly scary things. You've got 12 liters at 300 bar pressure. You have an accident, that car catches fire, and one of those things explodes, you won't have a car left. So here's a couple of things with air tanks. Put them in a cradle so they don't roll about in the boot of your car. Remove the whip in between your, your charging line when you're not using it, because if they get crimped, they can have a small hole, and the pressure going through that, if it touches your finger, it can actually cut through flesh. Um, and if, God forbid, you are involved in an accident and you have a car fire, when the fire brigade turn up, tell them you have a compressed air tank in the boot. They will thank you for it, especially when the car explodes. Anton Selin um, came up with a, a great question. What about insurance? Well, I'm a big believer in ins insurance. I mean, Air Gunner, uh, through our affiliates, we sell great insurance. Um, you never know what's going to happen when you're out there. Be insured. It doesn't cost. It costs, I think, 20, 30 pounds a year, and it gives you millions of pounds worth of third liability in cover. Um, check with your local broker. Check with the magazine. Check with your shooting organization 
and they will guide you right. But insurance is genuinely worth having. And also some, not HFT competitions, but some places, I think like Pete's Airgun Farm and, and other venues are actually have a requirement for you to have insurance uh, before you go there. So it's certainly worth having. Um, the other thing that I'm a great believer in, is certainly if you're a hunter or if you've got a permission just to go and practice on, is let someone know where you're going to be. Um, if I'm just coming out to the range, I say to my wife, I'm going to be outside for an hour. I'll be back in in a bit. And after an hour or so, she'll just come out and check, make sure I'm okay. Um, we're all getting a little bit older. For me, I'm all getting a little bit fatter. doesn't matter if you're getting shot, but you never know. You might have a heart issue. You might have whatever. So if you've told someone where you're going, I'm starting here, I'm moving there, and I'm going up there. If you've gone missing, it's much easier to find you. Now, the other thing I'm a huge fan of is an app you can get for your phone, for Android and for iPhone, called What Three Words. Now, what three words has done is it split the entire world up into grids that are three meters apart. You go on your phone, you click on it, and it might say that you're peach tractor jelly bean. And those three words point pinpoint exactly where you are. So you're humping through a field, you've got your gun, you've fallen over, you've broken your ankle, you're miles from anywhere. Call up Plod or the ambulance, say, I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Well, where are you? I'm by a tree. Which tree? The big tree. We don't know what that tree is. Oh, my what three words location is, and they'll get someone to you straight away because they can pinpoint you within a few feet. So if you're out going around with a rifle, make sure you've got permission to be there. Let someone know where you're going to be. Download what three words. Take some water. Be safe. Keep out the sun. Okay, so we're coming towards the end of our safety video, and, and as I said at the start, please, please, please put in the comments below anything that you think that we've missed. Um, a couple of other little things, obviously, barrel up, never rest a rifle on your foot, and put your hand over the barrel. I feel very uncomfortable doing this. You see some shotgunners put the barrel on their foot. Yeah, just, just don't do it. Um, feet and guns don't mix. Um, within the Facebook page, I made a joke about feeding a Rex safely. Well, this is Rex. Um, <laughs> never get him wet. Don't feed him after midnight. Don't creep up behind him. Um, right, the thing about Rex is Rex is your typical HF tier. Big and scary guy with a heart of gold. Raised more money for charity than virtually anyone I know in the HFT community. But it's people like this that, as a new shooter, you need to seek out and find. People like Rex have been shooting for years and have a wealth of knowledge, and they will happily guide you to keep you safe. Don't let him take your gun apart, and if you see him with some spanners, run away. But Rex will help you with safety and will guide you with safety. People like me, I will help you. Any of the regular HFT shooters will guide you with safety and no one will ever, ever criticize you. If there is something you are not sure about, join us on our Facebook page and ask a question. There are no stupid questions. There's just people who don't know the answers and there is nothing wrong with that. I've been the chief marshal for the UK HFT and the world's for many years. And I have had people come up to me and say, Gary, you are, are aware that what you're doing is wrong. And I've learned and I've shook that person by the hand and I've bought them a cup of coffee because I now have knowledge that I never had before. Never feel scared about going up to somebody who's experienced and saying, oh, excuse me, I didn't think, I thought the ruling was. Don't get in their face. Don't be aggressive. Um, don't go up and start shouting at people like certain people have done in the past because they're not true air gunners. Um, they're people on a power trip. And you will come across people like that. Everyone in our sport wants everybody to be safe. That is the number one rule of shooting. Safety, safety, safety. If you've enjoyed today's video, please share it around. Um, anyone you know taking up the sport, share this video with them. Um, please like the channel. It really helps. 
click on the little bell notification and you'll get lots of videos sent to you, most of which are better than mine, um, and subscribe to the channel. Um, we're talking about safety today. So Emily has told me that we need at least another 500 subscribers or she is going to safely break my legs. So please help me not get maimed by our chief editor. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Shoot well. And we'll see you all again in a couple of weeks where we're going to do a video on kneeling shots, which I know all you HFTers are waiting for. Thank you so much. Welcome. Welcome to Life at a Range. That's wrong. Goodbye from Life at a Range. Ta-da. Oh, just so you know, we're not going to waste this. This is my tea. I wanted steak. I'm not going to get steak. I've got soup.